All right, what's going on everyone? And yeah, just got a new JAMA PCB in today that I thought I would show you. Um, yes, unfortunately, it seems to be uh, experiencing uh, a little bit of a problem and that is an issue with the sound. So uh, yeah, I wish I could say that it was working perfectly, but uh, that's just not the case. And um, I'll get to those issues in just a moment here. Uh, I think I might have an idea as to what the problem could be, <laughs> but I could be completely wrong. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, let me just um, <clears throat> kind of briefly talk about the board itself. Uh, this is a 1987 game by V System. And um, yeah, you're probably more familiar with uh, that company as Video System, which they eventually changed their name around to. Uh, you know, most popular, I would say, for the Sonic Wings and uh, or Aero Fighters, whichever you want to refer to it as, um, series of shooters. And uh, this is another shooter. This is a horizontally scrolling one, as you can see. And uh, in the West, this was known as Rabbit Punch, but this is the uh, Japanese region PCB, so uh, it was called Rabio Lepis. And uh, yeah, just an awesome game, and really these days one that you don't kind of stumble across too often. It's uh, pretty difficult to come by. So, yeah, I did see it for sale and thought, yeah, I'd love to own this in my collection, so I'll definitely have to pick it up. That's what I did, and um, sadly it's giving me a, a couple of issues right now. And so, yeah, basically, yeah, not too long ago, <laughs> just uh, several minutes ago really, uh, Got the thing out, powered it on, and immediately upon firing it up, uh, I was getting some really bad staticky, uh, like a constant clicking, popping type of noise in the audio. And uh, all the other audio was just really low. You could barely hear it. So I thought, oh, damn, not really, you know, not really what I wanted to experience with this new PCB, just hooking it up and boom, having some immediate issues. So. Uh, I was kind of frustrated, just went up to the refrigerator, uh, got a drink, sat up there for a minute, and um, yeah, came back down a couple of minutes ago, and uh, this is where we're at currently, and the sound has just completely uh, seemingly gone out on it, not getting any audio whatsoever. Um, and no, it's not like a simple issue of perhaps... Uh, with the uh, dip switch bank, with maybe the demo sounds being turned off or anything like that. Uh, I did actually coin the game up and play a, a couple of seconds of it, and um, yeah, not getting any audio at all now. And I'll kind of show you that just so you can see, but if we just coin it up, hit start. Uh, as you can tell, or hear, or actually not hear, uh, there's there's no music at all, no audio, no sound effects, anything like that. And yeah, I mean, I guess over the years I've been pretty fortunate with the uh, various JAMA PCBs I've gotten in. Uh, I haven't really had too many major issues. I've had a couple of little things I've had to work on with some of them. Uh, I suppose the most severe case was... <clears throat> I guess it was uh, about a year ago, the uh, second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles PCB I got in. Uh, my original one's working well, but saw another one really cheap, so decided to pick it up. And uh, it was probably really cheap because uh, it wasn't working, uh, at least with the sound. And uh, with that PCB, it's uh, very reminiscent of this one. Kind of the same issues, uh, eerily enough. Um, when I fired that one up, I can recall kind of hearing the same kind of crackling, popping, uh, really staticky audio. And with that one, uh, I let it run for a little bit of time and the audio eventually just completely went out. And yeah, it's weird because it's kind of the same thing I'm experiencing with this one right now. So I guess kind of maybe it could be a similar thing. And um, uh, with that one and, you know, with all of these JAMA PCBs, um, the sound amp chip as well as all the uh, audio circuitry, uh, you know, it gets its power from the 12-volt uh, rail on your super gun or uh, your cab's uh, power supply unit. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, if there's a lot of noise on that 12 volt rail, uh, it will kind of cause the sound amp chip to go into uh, a mode of oscillation. And um, when that happens, you know, the uh, sound amp chip, it's just going to heat up to like these extremely dangerously hot levels, basically. So if you were to uh, put your finger on that sound amp chip and uh, keep it there for any extended period of time, you know, you're actually probably going to burn the skin clean off your finger. And um, yet with that PCB, the uh, noise on the 12 volt uh, rail, uh, it was actually because of a uh, capacitor decoupling issue. And uh, with that PCB specifically, that Turtles PCB, there is a really pesky, a large, um, I believe it was a 1000 microfarad, uh, 16 volt, something like that capacitor. And um, it was just bent down really badly on the board and uh, looked pretty knackered up and um, it ended up being the culprit. Uh, I recall trying to kind of lift it back up and kind of sort of wiggle the legs back into position but um, yeah it was just completely done for. So I ended up having to um, order a new electrolytic capacitor, uh, that one. Uh, it could also be a smaller mylar cap on that board but most cases, and um, as was the case with my board, it was that 1000 microfarad 16 volt cap. It's just a big piece of a thing, and you know, it's easy to get it knocked around and shipping and stuff like that. So, yeah, replace that, and uh, immediately upon firing the thing back up, you know, had no sound issues, everything was coming in crisp and clear. So, uh, I'm wondering if there is an issue here with uh, maybe a decoupling issue with some of these. Uh, caps. I'm not exactly sure what they are on this one. I'll have to uh, check out the board a little bit more closely. And, you know, I'll clean it up, uh, clean up the edge connector as well. But uh, I'm kind of, just being that I'm remembering that experience, I'm thinking it's probably some noise on the 12 volt rail from the uh, Superguns PSU. And I'll test it on my, uh, my other cabs and Supergun to see, uh, you know, if I'm getting any different results there. If it's maybe a PSU. Uh, you issue on the super gun, but I'm thinking it's more of like a, a cap decoupling issue. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, sorry about the tone, but uh, you know, paid a little bit of money for this, so I was hoping it would be uh, working uh, cleanly, you know, right when it arrived. But I'll have to clean it up, see what I can do with it. And um, yeah, you're probably never going to actually see this video if I can't come up with a solution so uh, hopefully I can and uh, if that is the case and I can kind of get this thing working again um, yeah I'll post a, another video and kind of splice them all together I suppose so uh, <laughs> hopefully talk to all of you soon but uh, yeah thanks for checking that out and bye for now Okay, so back and yeah, as you can see, or <laughs> yet again more importantly, as you can hear, uh, now we have a fully functioning JAMA PCB complete with the audio this time around. And wow, uh, absolutely thrilled. Couldn't be more pleased with this current situation with this PCB. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I suppose when I uh, turned the camera on right when I got this, um, unpacked the board, hooked it up to the super gun, uh, started filming, you know. I hadn't really anticipated uh, experiencing any technical issues with the PCP. Just kind of wanted to do sort of a brief pickups video to show you this really cool game. So, um, yeah, when I uh, saw those issues, you know, with the sound, didn't really give myself uh, a whole lot of an opportunity to, I suppose, diagnose what could be potentially plaguing this board. But, yeah, I mean, the thing was honestly just absolutely filthy and it's still a little bit dirty I could clean it up a, a little bit better but just going over it kind of quickly um, if you just look at the PCB itself it's uh, a couple of them the top board right here is the motherboard and uh, it's uh, connected to the game board beneath it via these ribbon cables so uh, just kind of check to make sure those looked okay um, 
both of the connection points between the motherboard and the game board. Uh, just took it off, made sure that they were uh, clean, and kind of resecured them on there. And um, yeah, I mean, looking at the uh, edge connector of the board when I uh, first opened it up, uh, it didn't seem too terribly filthy or anything, but uh, going over it and cleaning it up, wow, I mean, there was just so much filth all over that thing, so uh, I'm sure that helped a little bit as well. Um, what I also did here with, um, as you can see, a lot of these are socketed, these ICs and ROMs. A lot of them aren't, but the ones that were uh, just used a uh, flathead screwdriver to gently pry them off and uh, used some electrical contact cleaner uh, in conjunction with a metal wire brush uh, just to kind of clean off or help clean off some of the dirt and grime that, uh, you know, could possibly lead to some corrosion. So uh, I guess sort of sorted that issue out as well. Um, because they did look a little bit dirty. <laughs> what else? I mean, there were just so many things with this thing. Um, uh, right here in the middle, the uh, crystal oscillator, it was just like twisted and bent all the way around. So I uh, just kind of gently kind of wiggled it sort of back into place on the board and experienced something kind of similar with the, uh, what is it over here? The uh, 640 kilohertz uh, ceramic oscillator over here. So uh, maybe some issues with the... Uh, uh, oscillator, resonator stuff going on with the PCB. Um, what else? I mean, there are just a ton of caps up here that were just kind of twisted and bent all out of position. Uh, over here by the um, audio amp circuitry, the largest one up there is, I believe it was a 220 microfarads, um, 16 volts, uh, obviously electrolytic capacitor, and uh, bunch of smaller ones like a uh, hundred microfarad 10 volt I believe capacitors up there and I mean those things were I'm surprised they're working because they were pretty warped and bent around and kind of dirty uh, pushed over a little bit so you know I just kind of briefly did my best to sort of resecure them just kind of set them back up into place some um, bunch of these capacitors over here near the uh, audio adjustment potentiometers as well uh, yeah, they were just kind of all over the place. Uh, what else? I mean, there's a ton of little uh, kind of uh, disc capacitors over here, ceramic disc capacitors that were uh, kind of bent out of place as well. And, you know, I just tried to kind of readjust them without doing anything more than that. Uh, what else? Some of the Mylar caps up there by the uh, audio amp chip. And, uh, oh yeah, actually like a very similar thing to that Turtles board when I was having kind of like the uh, capacitor uh, coupling issues with that with uh, the uh, 1000 microfarad uh, 16 volt big cap uh, for that Turtles board. Uh, you know, that audio amp chip on that PCB was just blazingly hot, just hotter than, than hell really. And uh, if you can see this one. I don't know if that's showing up, but this is the um, audio amp chip for this PCB, and it's a Fujitsu uh, MB3730A. And I mean, yeah, when I fired this thing back up and just kind of briefly touched that with my finger, I mean, wow, I've never felt anything so hot in my life. Literally, if I had kept it there for any longer, I uh, would have probably burnt the skin off of my finger. So, uh, I don't know, with that... Uh, 220 microfarad, a 16 volt electrolytic capacitor, kind of untwisted, sort of readjusted, and uh, fortunately it's still making good contact with the motherboard. Uh, perhaps there was some sort of uh, capacitor decoupling issue that maybe could have been solved with that, and maybe with some of the poly caps up near the audio amp chip as well. Uh, these mylars, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and then with the uh, oscillators as well, it, you kind of tend to think that maybe, uh, I don't know, just my best guess would be that could have been causing the main audio issues, but wow, well, man, I mean, just absolutely thrilled. A relatively easy fix, just kind of going over it, cleaning it, um, messing with the resonator oscillators and the uh, various electrolytic and uh, different ceramic mylar caps, all kinds of stuff on here that were just in just some really dirty and poor shape. I mean, I don't know if when it got shipped, they were just uh, that badly bent. And I mean, fortunately, just kind of readjusting them. No solder work necessary for this job like was necessary for the uh, Turtles PCB fix, but it yeah, just kind of really readjusted them, kind of moved them back up into uh, what would 
kind of you would suppose to be like the normal uh, position for them to be seated on the board and <laughs> didn't work the legs too bad in doing so. I mean, actually they were uh, pretty bad uh, being that they were all bent down, so now it seems like they're in much better condition. So uh, just uh, absolutely thrilled with that. And yeah, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe a capacitor decoupling issue. So <laughs> I don't know, but whatever the case is, just absolutely thrilled to have this thing in perfect working order yet again. So yeah, man, very, very pleased. And uh, definitely going to have to do some. Um, gameplay video on this soon. It's kind of a little bit late right now and I'm uh, slightly exhausted so I'll save that for another day but yeah yeah just really thrilled to have it working and wanted to sort of uh, briefly conclude the video. Um, wasn't sure I was going to post the first part of the video if I wasn't able to get this thing working but yeah now that we've got it working I'll kind of splice the two of them together uh, put this video up and yeah, pretty awesome. Um, I'll definitely have a gameplay on it pretty soon. I'm just trying to think in my head if there was anything else that I did to it. You know, I just kind of finished up working on it, and I think that's about the extent of the troubleshooting. And yeah, man, just functioning flawlessly right now. I uh, didn't actually even need to uh, take it out and test it on any of the other arcade units in the room. Um, just kind of cleaned it up and kind of readjusted those caps really quickly and voila. Yeah, just a totally cool game. And actually, uh, my friend in France, Benoit, sent me out a uh, Rabio Lepis Special for the PC Engine uh, earlier in the year. And uh, that's kind of, it's roughly based on this one. A lot of the levels and bosses, different things like that. Some certain gameplay elements are changed up a little bit as well, but uh, very similar. And uh, yeah, when he sent me that out, I've been playing that a lot. Just absolutely love that game. So uh, really that one kind of inspired me to uh, check out this PCB. So I've been looking for it for a little bit of uh, time. And it doesn't really pop up too often, but since I was able to find it, I'm like, wow, you know, jumped on it pretty quickly. Because uh, uh, this is a 1987 PCB by uh, V System. If you can see the uh, actual like, factory label on there. Not sure if that's going to focus or not, but. Yeah, these. Uh... <laughs> This kind of hardware, it's a, a little bit uh, finicky and cumbersome these days, so. Uh, and being that it is quite old, you know, they're not so easy to come by. So, yes, yes, just uh, quite stoked that it is working. And, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with me through the uh, a couple parts of the video. It's just a absolute hellacious mess in this room right now, but... I uh, love this uh, arcade room. Gonna have to clean it up here soon. But yeah, for now, first and foremost, just um, quite pleased to have this one working. Rabio Lepis. And of course, some scan line action for you. <laughs> The Vega Junior Super Gun and this beast of a Trinitron, the 32 inch. Love this little makeshift arcade setup. You know, it gives me a much larger monitor than even the uh, Neo Geo candy cabs. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed playing on this one over the years. Yeah, thanks for checking out the video, and we'll talk to all of you very soon, so bye for now. Take it easy, guys.